Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well, and welcome to today's midday bonus upload. And let me tell you, it is quite horrifying. Before we get into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click the like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to this middle of the day bonus upload, shall we? Today's first encounter. So a couple of hours ago, myself and my friend Matt came back from a trip to Walmart. There's this pavement trail down by our neighborhood park that we walk to get to the shopping center. Because it's close and we've never bought more than we can carry when going on a fun shopping trip. Anyway, back on topic. We went back to the park and discussed random things about a show we had watched, Troubles, etc., we then hear these awful, eerie screams, but as we live in a neighborhood with quite a few kids, we at first put it aside as just being kids fooling around. Then about five to ten minutes later, I really can't recall I wasn't keeping track, we hear these screams of what you could attribute to utter disembowelment. I mean, the kind of scream you'd hear when somebody's being butchered in a horror movie. Even worse, when I noticed, they came from two different directions. Naturally, that horror movie instinct drove me to check it out. Foolish of me, I guess. Matt gets behind me as I check it out. I'm gripping a pocket knife close to me as I steadily walk toward the first scream location. Near the front of the neighborhood by some bushes and trees. I'm about a foot away from the brush in front of me, and am hit with this complete and utter uneasiness that makes me feel sick. I mean, I'm going to vomit every organ out of my body sick. All noise is quiet for about two seconds until something charges at me from the brush a few feet in front of me. Way at the back of the scenery, though. It was large enough to rustle the leaves on the trees and the entirety of the brush, but it couldn't have been a human. It was quick as hell, and I wasn't going to find out just how fast it could truly go. So me and Matt booked it out of there. We make it far enough to the end of the park and turned around and see nothing. Matt tells me that another scream was down by the basketball court in my neighborhood, so me being the idiot at that I am, I went back to check that out. We arrived at the court and nothing there. It's all quiet again. The problem with this particular location is that the general area of brush that we were just chased out of is about a hundred feet. In front of us, making it clearly visible, there's an opening in the trees down at the end, so I peer into it from my vantage point and see what looks like an inhumanly contorting arm that has the color of a decayed corpse-like brown show itself from the opening and quickly hide. Matt said he saw the same exact thing when I asked him about it. Again, me being the dumb human being that I am, went to check it out, this time pulling out my pocket knife and putting the blade out in front of me. The same uneasiness I talked about comes back, this time getting worse and worse, to the point where my body feels numb, yet I feel awful pain all throughout my body. I felt the presence of evil surrounding me, 
Again, I arrive about two feet from that opening when I hear a voice whisper my name. It was a raspy, distorted, yet somewhat human sounding, like an animal trying to trick someone in a Disney movie that they are a person for whatever reason. Yet, the voice went through a million filters and, when heard, sounds evil and disturbing. I felt devilish and evil, and again, something charges at me from the opening, this time snarling and growling in that same voice that whispered to me. No, Matt was about 50 feet behind me. Now, wanting to live, I run, and surpassed even Matt. The phrase in my head repeating, in the name of God, leave me alone. Whatever was behind me kept charging, but eventually stopped, seemingly right after the phrase repetition in my head stopped. I'm genuinely terrified. People tell me that it could have been a coyote with mange or a fox. The problem is, I've heard a fox yell or scream, and the screams I heard sounded nothing like a fox. And also, it was far too big to have been a coyote. I'm concerned for me and my friend's safety. Also, if it helps, I live in Northern Virginia. A little update. Myself and Matt went and checked the area again. There was a pentagram made out of sticks just around where we were chased. I'm also about 70% sure that there was a Satan's cross around that same area. Honestly, very weird. Today's second encounter. This happened to me when I was 16 and still bothers me several years later. I've always had a very strange sleep schedule, and when I was 15 or 16, it was very common for me to be up at 2 in the morning and later in the summer. One night at around 3 in the morning, I decided to go outside into my backyard to get some fresh air because it was a pretty warm night. At the time, I lived in the suburbs in southern Tennessee in a pretty run-down neighborhood. The house next to ours had been abandoned for a couple of years, and I always joked that it is cursed because three separate people had bought it, moved in, and then sold it and moved away again, all within the span of maybe five years before this. At this time, the house was unoccupied and had been for some time. While I was outside, I started listening to music on my MP3 player on my headphones. After a while, I started hearing a growling sound that wasn't super loud, but still managed to get past my headphones and my music. After pausing my music and listening for a minute, I realized it was coming from behind me where the abandoned house was. It sounded like something pretty big was making the noise, and I figured maybe a large stray dog had gotten into the neighbor's yard somehow. Since the yard and mine were separated by a tall, sturdy fence, I just ignored it and went back to my music. The noises continued periodically, and finally, after a while, I decided just to go over to the fence and find out what was making it. As I approached the fence, I heard rustling sounds from the other side like something was moving in the grass. Figuring now that it was most definitely a stray dog, I leaned in close to the fence and looked through the crack in one of the boards. A pair of huge yellow eyes was staring directly back at me. At eye level with me, I kind of stood there frozen like an idiot for a few seconds. But then I heard the growling noise again. This time, inches from my face, that snapped me out of it. I turned and ran back to the house, locked the doors, and failed to sleep that night. The next day, I looked through the fence again to see if there was any logical explanation. Maybe it had been a dog standing on a table or a stack of boxes for some reason. But the yard was totally bare. No boxes, no patio furniture, nothing. Whatever had looked at me was actually as tall as I was. I moved away years ago and never went back, so I have no idea how that house or that neighborhood is doing now, but for the rest of the time that I lived there, I deliberately ignored any and all weirdness from the other side of that fence.
Today's third terrifying encounter. I would like to clarify that while I am religious, I am not particularly superstitious. And despite looking and exploring many abandoned locations, the sites of horrific tragedies like old battlegrounds and massacres, I have never experienced or truly believed in anything paranormal or unexplainable. This is the one and only experience I have had that made me even consider the possibility of otherworldly forces or things I cannot rationally explain. And if I had not experienced this personally, I would assume with great deal of certainty that this was complete BS. Now for some context of the area I was in. My great uncle owns a lot of land in northern Saskatchewan, Canada, with some of his pasture that he uses for cattle. But half of one of his largest properties is fenced off and the cows cannot go there. In the sectioned off lactose free zone, the entire place is densely packed with foliage. I mean, when I hunt, I almost only use game trails and small clearings because a lot of the brush is too thick to get through without a machete. The ground itself is blotted with some small steep hills toward the entrance to the property. There's one main dirt road that goes from a Texas gate at the entrance all the way back to the furthest side of the property. Coming off the road in the hilly area, we have a camp. The camp consists of a camperized Atco trailer. Picture a big-ass yellow sea can in front of the entrance, gated with barbed wire, because sometimes my uncle will move his cattle to different fenced-off areas of the land. With my mother's pulled-behind trailer that we can't pull anymore sitting perpendicularly to the Atco and a tiny, dingy 70s, 14-foot pull-behind that a family member gave me so I could have privacy at camp and not to have to sleep with my mom. Needless to say, we spend a lot of time in the woods, and both my mom's and my door were facing the direction of the Atco, meaning I had the pseudo-alleyway between my door and my mom's wall, and finally, in front of the Atco trailer, we have a fire pit, and close next to it, in front of my mom's place, there is a table for food prep. I apologize for the lengthy explanation, but I feel like in order for the sequence of events to make sense, you'll need to understand where I was in the space, and maybe locations will make my reference points more clear for explaining later. We've always had lots of wildlife like big cats and bears that could harm people. I actually had to put a bear down that came into our camp and was far too comfortable with people not too long after. So, since I was young, I learned to recognize the sounds and sights around me. And while cautious, I'm rarely afraid of anything out there, especially given that I'm usually armed when I'm not with multiple people. The summer before last, we had a remarkably calm experience there. There were hardly any critters we had to deal with, and it seemed the bears and pests were leaving us alone. There were no droppings, many small game trails had grown in, and the camp that usually took two days to set up was exactly how we left it the previous trip. It was peaceful. It being summer, I filled my days with woodworking, fishing trips, and the occasional hike, looking for berries and setting traps for rabbits, grouse, and other small game that could be prepared quickly over a fire with my family. But I mostly came up unlucky. Regardless of the seemingly lack of disturbances, we always were careful at night, making sure to have a bright light and keep a lookout for anything. After the first week, we began hearing noises around the camp very late at night. That would drive our dog insane all night to the point we just had to keep her inside but never saw anything. It almost felt like whatever it was was probing and checking out our camp nightly, but always staying far enough away and hidden enough that we could never see it with our spotlights. Then one night, just like any other, Bar the eerie quietness that usually came around that time, 
I left my mother's camper a couple of hours after the daylight had disappeared with a lantern-style LED light. And as a rarity, I didn't have anything to defend myself with. No gun, no bear spray, not even a knife. So I was a little bit more cautious and observant than usual, given I felt more vulnerable. As I walked from the exit of my mom's camper, I looked around for a minute, scanning the tree line, and then began to loop around to my door. I panned as I walked from right to left from the entrance to the fire pit and then to the table. It was there just behind the table, not 20 feet away, that I saw a naked, extremely pale, almost gray, probably just because of the dark, lanky humanoid figure standing still and directly facing me. As I caught, as it caught my gaze, I felt my heart drop and immediately went cold. I probably only stared for three seconds at most, but it felt like several minutes as my brain processed what I was looking at. This creature, whatever it was, stood somewhere between six and a half to seven and a half feet tall with low slumped shoulders, and had a frail thin body that reminded me of photos from the Holocaust, but with disproportionately long limbs. I couldn't see the legs fully because of the table, but what I could see looked like sinew and skin stretched over the leanest and thinnest body I had ever seen. I know I might be sounding like a drama bomb, but I couldn't describe the primal fear and shock that came over me. It was like a combination of the feeling you would get by being threatened at gunpoint and also hearing someone stalk you in the woods, but ramped up to the point where I could barely think. I couldn't make out many details of the face, but the light cast small shadows on the face that made it look like it had shallow features similar to a nose and lips and eye sockets that were smoothed down, almost like Valdemort and Slenderman's love child. I ran like my life depended on it. The last few feet to my door, once inside I grabbed my shotgun, stuffed several shells into my pocket, loaded the gun, aimed it at the door. I sat in silence with the hammer, walked back waiting for the doorknob to turn or the frosted glass to break. I sat and waited for hours into the early morning expecting to see or hear something, but I never did. Not even any foliage moving or items. Eventually, at around four in the morning, I lowered my guard, propped the shotgun next to my bed, and hesitantly fell asleep. When I woke up hardly believing in what I had seen the night before, I was in the area to see if I had seen any shapes or items that I could have mistaken or warped into my mind this creature that I saw, but the only thing in the area was the table with some pots and pans on it that had been blackened by the fire. I'm still not quite sure what to make of all of this, but I do have some ideas of what I witnessed. Given the fact that I believe it was stalking us and staked out our camp for several nights, along with positioning itself between me and my mother's camper, directly in front of the path that I took every night, leads me to believe that it had some level of intelligence comparable to low a person lying a trap or setting something up. As I mentioned, I looked around after exiting my mother's camper, and I never heard a thing which tells me that it either was waiting there watching, or it's so incredibly quiet that I never heard it move even a leaf, which would not line up with us hearing the disturbances from the previous nights. It also left as quietly as it appeared, which leaves three options. Either it went out of its way to use the same road entering the camp that a person would use for convenience, or it silently crept through the game trail, or it didn't leave until after I lowered my guard and my adrenaline died down. I'm honestly not sure which opinion is more likely or more off-putting. I'm really not sure what I saw, but I know it was not a human. The photos and drawings of these crawlers reminded me a great deal of it. I know it's not worth much online, but hand to God, I swear this is not a piece of fanciful writing. 
This is 100% the truth of what happened to me at my family's camp. Today's fourth encounter. My parents were out of town and I lived in a small neighborhood in upstate New York. My backyard was half cleared land and half dense woods. There was a small creek that ran behind my house as well, so I could see all sorts of animals at night, including turkey, fox, possum, raccoons, and deer. One night at around one in the morning, I was on the couch in the extended living room part of my house where three of the walls had windows and we had a skylight. This is important because I had a complete view of almost all of my backyard up to the tree's edge, including the moon overhead, which was a waning crescent. I heard the sound of a very angry squirrel for about five minutes, and I kind of brushed it off because I've heard angry squirrels before. Then I heard the most terrifying screech. It sounded like a goose had just been murdered and screamed. It scared the crap out of me, and I immediately rushed over to the window to see if I could see anything. I was worried that it might have been a wolf since my neighbor's cat likes to go wandering around outside and usually kills a bunny or two and leaves them in our front yard. It's pitch black and my porch light barely illuminates anything. I brushed off the noise and went to bed shortly thereafter. The next morning I headed over to my neighbor's house who have hunted before and occasionally would bow hunt as well. I asked if they had heard the noise last night and they said yes. They thought it was a deer crying for help. They told me they were going to investigate the woods in a few hours to see what happened. I was reluctant to ask to go with, but I was determined to know what that noise had been. A few hours later, my neighbors and I went into the woods. We didn't have to go far when we saw a dead squirrel pretty much ripped to pieces. We continued on figuring that squirrels don't have much meat on them, so the animal probably tried to get as much as it could out of it. We wandered for about five more minutes when we came across five dead rabbits, a deer, and her fawn. Now, this frightened me the most. Three of the dead rabbits had just their heads missing. Their bodies were intact. The other two were ripped to pieces similar to the dead squirrel. I almost gagged at the smell of it all. I did not dare walk toward the goose or the deer. My neighbor, who had a bow on him, walked toward the mother deer to see that she had long claw marks on her torso and her head had been mangled. The fawn, however, had its head missing as well. Now, the weirdest part of all of the dead animals was the goose. The goose was fully intact, except that its lungs had been ripped open and all of its inner organs were gone. My neighbor's wife immediately called the police and said that there was a bear roaming the property and attacking innocent animals. I had my suspicions, but I don't believe this was a bear. My neighbor, who had his bow, was keeping a clear eye on the surrounding woods, like he was watching for something. His wife paid no attention to this and continued to talk to the police. Then it hit me, the feeling of dread and chills. New York gets cold in the mornings, but this was summer and the humidity is usually around 90%. The entire woods seemed to be silent as well. We were near the creek and couldn't hear the water flowing either. I could see my neighbor had the same feeling wash over him as he raised his bow and loaded an arrow onto it. He told his wife to be quiet and me to stand back. I could not see anything, but that feeling was still with me. I know my neighbor saw something, but refused to tell me what it was since I was 15, and he probably didn't want to scare me. After a few minutes, the feeling of dread was gone, and the sound of something large moving through the forest could be heard in the distance. My neighbor lowered his bow and told us we had to leave. We immediately listened, and by the time we got back to the small neighborhood, the local police had arrived. My neighbor explained the story to the police, and they advised us to stay inside. 
Later, they sent a few animal control people to survey the area to try to find the bear and get it away from the neighborhood, but they came back empty-handed. I never believed in these things and never thought they were out there, but I did some research, and I believe it may have been a dogman that was killing these animals. My neighbors refused to talk to me about it ever again. My neighbor, who had the bow, seemed very cautious after that. This happened a few years ago, and I now live in a different state. I also have never told anybody this story because I thought I was overthinking, which I do a lot. Overanalyzing is kind of my thing. I don't have any contact with that neighbor either anymore. For anyone wondering, my neighbor had moved to this bigger piece of land because he had hoped to bow hunt on his own property so he could stand up in the trees. As far as I know, New York State deemed that it was still a form of hunting and later the town police told him that he could not do it anymore. Today's final encounter. I've been hesitant to share this for a while since I think it could have been a black bear considering the season and general shape of it, but regardless, it freaked me out more than any black bear should have. And I have nothing better to do seeing that I can't sleep and don't need to be anywhere tomorrow. Anyway, I was hiking on a series of trails close to the Minnesota-Wisconsin border in a vast area of natural beauty and rustic comfort a river basin with several medium or medium-large rivers flowing through it, remnants of the massive glacial river that carved the area out of solid bedrock. These rivers are all connected to the Mississippi, and the waters I fished five years ago have now rained on the coast of Louisiana. Very fascinating area, and has been settled for a millennia by different peoples and family groups. Hiking through this area this last spring, around April 23rd, if my memory is correct, I stopped for a break on a ridge overlooking one of the aforementioned rivers and tore open a package of trail mix, which I downed in record time, probably under 10 seconds, a feat I think is more impressive than the encounter itself. I was getting up to continue my lope, when I stopped and noticed movement about 20 yards up the trail and at a slight incline relative to my position. It was stirring, making smooth but hasty movements hardly discernible from the surrounding foliage, which was just beginning to sprout and still thick enough to obscure other people from within 10 yards. I'm talking scrub oak, hazelnut, and some flowering wild plum and cherry all with green tips breaking out of their twigs, thick stuff and easily to get lost in without something to orient yourself. Grouse hunting in this is fun but challenging as you're going to get your gun stuck on a branch and lose out of the 9 out of 10 shots. As I watched the partially obscured furry friend with curiosity, it began to raise and kept going up a solid eight feet judging from the height of the brush compared to my height, six one, and I felt the most uncomfortable odd sensation and began to jog back the way I came. Meanwhile, my discomfort shifted to terror of a primal kind when I stopped for a breath and heard brush breaking behind me within 15 yards or less and gaining at around three yards per second, judging on the frequency of breaking noise. I forgot completely about needing to breathe and ran harder and faster than I thought I could with my video game playing fat-ass legs. I reached the trailhead in about 10 minutes compared to the 40 it took initially to reach the point of the encounter while jogging and walking and pausing frequently. I get to my dad's car, turn the keys, and drive off. I wrote it off as a bear and didn't think about it until a little while ago when lying awake. I recalled the experience and how odd I had felt. Currently agnostic on what it is. Well, there you have it, folks. Today's middle of the day bonus. I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. 
I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. It is, after all, your support that keeps the channel growing and going, and honestly, what gives people a chance and a place for them to share their experiences and theories judgment-free, simply treated with the respect that we all deserve. Thank you. Everyone, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, friends. These creatures are real. They are out there and dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for answers, and God bless.